Shawnette. No, you're right on time. I'm actually the one that's late. <laughs> How are you doing? I was supposed to start at 4 o'clock, but um, see what had happened was... <laughs> I was trying to make sure I had all my notes together and I didn't realize what time it was. Yes. So have you heard about this story? Like, what is your take on all of this? Matter of fact, should I go live on Instagram? I didn't even start my Instagram. I also focus on getting started on YouTube. But everybody come on in. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And make sure you share the video. Please share the video on your um, social platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> whichever one you use. I've been following this story a little bit and, um, of the guy who was, killed or murdered on a small island by a Centralese tribe. I think that's the exact way to pronounce it. One second. Okay, now the picture of the man um, on here, his name is John Allen Chow. And he is a missionary who happened to have been traveling around the world, trying to deliver the news of Jesus Christ, trying to get people saved. You know, that's what missionaries tend to do. And sometimes they go to uh, locations far away overseas. Sometimes they go to uh, poor countries. Um, you know, where they think people need to hear about the word of God. And it just so happened that this particular man, John Chow, had went over seas. And let me show you real quick the map so y'all can know exactly where he was at let's see here we go all right here's a map i'm going to cover a little bit of my other stuff real quick but anyway these are the andaman islands over by india in the indian ocean and one of these little islands right here, I don't think you can see my cursor, but it's this little island off to the side. It says North Cent Centennial Island. And that is where he went. Now, the North Centennial Island, um, from what we know, it's a, it's a small island. Um, they said the people who live there are of African descent. And they still live in the, mm, I don't want to say caveman era, but pre-civilization era, um, stone age era, you know, whatever you want to call it. The people there, they 
have never been introduced to civilization. Um, let me show you another picture. Here's another picture. So if you look at the people here, these were some of the people that were on the beach when he was um, trying to get on their land to try to reach them, to teach them about Jesus Christ, about Christianity. Um, so if you, you can tell just from what they got on, their clothes, their weapons, that these are like Stone Age people. From African descent, of course, you can tell very clearly they are really dark skin and complexion. And again, the, the, the island that they live on is a very, very small island. Um, one second, let me find another picture for you. Oh, hey, everybody, come on in, come on in. We're just talking about the story of the guy, John Allen Chow, that was murdered by the Sentinelese uh, African tribe over by India. It's been all over the news, all over social media. And the name of my live, the name of this video, I titled it was Missionary John Allen Child's Death in Vain. Keep in mind, he was a missionary man who, you know, again, like, like I said before, missionary people, they travel across the world. They, um, they go everywhere. They go even in the, within the United, United States, you know, to try to get people to know about Christ or Jesus, God. Um, he was a trained missionary and he was killed on a remote island. And he had been planning this trip to visit that island, they said, since he was like a teenager. He was 27 years old, and they say he had trained with all nations. It's a Christian missionary group based in Kansas City, Kansas. So actually, he's not that far from where, well, him, his family, you know, their missionary group is not that far from where I live in Omaha, Nebraska. Let me put his picture back up. This is John Allen Chow. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because there's so much that I keep hearing about this young man. Um, I think he was 26 and just had turned 27 uh, for this trip, you know, on this trip that he was on. Um, basically, the story is the people on that island who are still living in the Stone Age have never been introduced to civilization. Um... They never been introduced to organized religion. Uh, they, matter of fact, the language that they speak, really no one knows the language. Um, it was said that some other Africans uh, who live nearby in the area um, kind of thought that they could you know, relate to them and speak to them. This was a while ago, not recently, and they couldn't even communicate with them. So I'm, I'm not too sure on where their language comes from or where their language derived from. We just know that they are from Africa. They came from Africa um, years and years ago. I mean, the tribe is like 30,000 years old. That's, that's how long ago. <clears throat> That's how old that tribe is. Never been introduced to civilization. Never been introduced to organized religion. But this man, John Chow, he made a, he had plan been planning a trip since he was a teenager. So for almost like 10 years, he was planning to go over there. Um, this particular island, though, is protected by the government over there in India. Um, the, they're not in India, but they're located in the islands surrounding that country. And actually, one second, let me pull the, the island back up again. Okay. Now here's India up here, way at the top in that little circle globe. And you see the red square, that's the and Andaman Islands. And along the Andaman Islands, which is this long strip, the long strip of islands you see right here, and then this tiny spot over here, 
is North Sentinel Island. So North Sentinel Island is part of the Andaman Islands, which is located in the Indian o Ocean near India. This island has been protected for a very long time by the Indian, you know, government. And basically it's protected because these people, this tribe is 30,000 years old. Um, once upon a time, a while back, some of the people from the tribe have been taken. And I believe they were by white people. I don't remember if they were missionaries or not, but they were by white people. And they was taken to do like some research or something like that. And every single one of them got sick, like really, really, really sick. Because of the simple fact, they have never been prone to our diseases. They've never been prone to, you know, a lot of things that we um, have, especially, you know, children, you know, chicken pox, you know, all kinds of things. They have never been, you know, acclimated to any of that. They never had medicine. They never had vaccinations. You know what I mean? So these people over here, they protect themselves it might seem very harsh the way they protect themselves because this is not the first time that they have killed someone or murdered someone it's not the first time they didn't even kill a man there's a man who had went over there with his children they killed him they killed his children and one of his children was six years old um and like i said there's a lot of things being said about this guy like, why would he go over there? You know, why would the missionary people let him go over there? You know, the I guess the missionary, they are trying to basically bring charges up on these, you know, this tribe as well. And it's like, it's a lot of outrage by, you know, these this Christian group. But it's like, who's really at fault here? Who's really at fault here? The guy, John Chow, you know, rest in peace. I'm not trying to take anything from what he tried to do. Um, under a normal situation, I, I would say this was, you know, a very good deed he tried to do, you know, try to reach people, try to teach them about Jesus, you know, about God, you know. But these people who... <sighs> They, 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 <laughs> they are not nice to strangers. They are not nice to strangers. And they, they try to protect their land, their island, their people. Anytime they are in fear, you have to keep in mind these people, um, being that they have been all by themselves for many, 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 many years, they don't know any other language. They cannot communicate with anybody else. Um, so when somebody tries to get on their island or, you know, try to approach them, not in a confrontational way, because this guy did not approach them in a confrontational way, but they are going to defend themselves and protect themselves because they have no idea what the man's motive is or what anybody's motive would be to come to their island. So a lot of people say, you know, this guy was stupid. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have came there. He shouldn't have went there. And then as far as the person that, you know, took him there, the person who took them, took him there by boat, he was a fisherman. And he also, now I do know that they said charges will be brought upon him. As far as the tribe, I doubt if any, I doubt if anything bad will happen to them because they are protected. They are protected. It is illegal to go to their island because of the simple fact they could be prone to our diseases. Their immune, their their, they have never their immune system is not as strong as ours. Basically, that's was it. They never receive immunizations. They, you know, they. They could easily get sick around anybody else that is not from their island. So I wanted to get you guys thoughts on this story because, I mean, I've been hearing some very, very, very negative things about this guy. Although I think it is wrong that he went over there. I mean, 
boy, <laughs> I, I'm, I was shocked by some of the comments that I've seen, you know, regarding this young man. Um, again, it, it's illegal. It was illegal for him to go over there. Um, as a matter of fact, it could have been, you know, it was a possibility he could have survived. Because, you know, from his journal, you know, because he had, you know, he had written down his, you know, journal, his entries almost, you know, every day, every, every single thing that he was going through, you know, he had a journal and he had noted that the first time he went there, when they, you know, first came across him, they, somebody shot him with an arrow. And when they shot him with an arrow, he had his waterproof Bible um, on his chest, against his chest. So basically, they didn't do no harm that time, you know, because it went, it went through the Bible. But he escaped. He managed to get back to, you know, his boat. And, but then he came back. He had somebody bring him back. And that's the person that they're going to press charges on because... I mean, you can just assume that the person who brought him to the island knew that it was illegal for anybody to go to that island and bother these people. I, I just, I, I don't know. The, the, the missionary people that he's been training with, I just, I just wish they would have tried harder to prevent this from happening. Um, most missionaries... They fund you for you to go to particular places. So I'm assuming they knew exactly where they were going. They said he planned for this for years. He was properly trained. But my thing is, even if, even if these people were not um, on, as, as on defense as they are for their community, and even if they try not to kill you or harm you, if you came to their island, like how much could you get through to them? They're pre-civilized people. Nobody knows their language. I mean, you up there telling them, hi, my name is Tanya. I am here to deliver you the word of Christ, our father in heaven. They're going to be looking at you like, Huh? I mean, how how much could he have possibly... Get? It wasn't like he had a translator. So, I, I don't know. I have a lot of questions for this missionary group. Like, did they allow this? Did they bless this journey? Did they, I mean, I just don't understand. And why was he there all by himself? Why was he there all by himself? I mean, he's traveled like to, I mean, just send somebody to the end of the world all by herself to a country that still lives, a, 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 a community of people that still lives in the Stone Age, who has no idea of the English language or any other language. It, it's just, I just don't understand. I really, I really just don't understand. And so, again, a lot of people out here is just, you know, making all kind of mean, horrible comments about this guy. And I'm not going to do that because he's still, you know, he's still somebody's child, somebody's brother, somebody's cousin, somebody's friend. You know, again, I thought it was wrong for him to go there. I, I just don't know. I just don't know. And then I was listening to something earlier and some guy said, you know what? I believe that God, you know, has saved me and put me into the place to where I am, you know, which is in America. Um, we might have some horrible things that happen here. You know, America is not perfect. Our communities are not perfect. Our government is definitely not perfect, but it's a lot better than a lot of these other places that you can travel to. That well, actually, that you probably won't want to ever travel to. And he's like, I don't feel like it was because the guy, the, the young man said that God told him to go there. 
So that's what a lot of people were like, you know, picking at. Like God ain't tell him to go over there. He went over there on his own will. You know, and then they were saying how it's just like back in the day when the white man was trying to, you know, go to these places where these, you know, indignant, and I can never say that word right, indigenous people live, you know, and try to, you know, civilize them. Um, and they said that's what he was trying to do. I wouldn't quite say he was totally trying to civilize them by bringing them the word, the gospel. But, you know, it's true that, you know, the gospel was pushed on us, pushed on a lot of us who were, you know, basically taken from our homes and brought to another place unwillingly. And we had a particular religion pushed down our throats. So they were saying, you know, he's over there just trying to force religion on these people you know, oh, wow, that that's a hard one because, you know, I, I don't agree either that he tried to force religions down on them. You know, going to treat, it's kind of like, kind of like Jehovah Witnesses. Everybody them probably had a Jehovah Witness come and knock on their door. No offense to the Jehovah Witnesses. Okay. Um, but they don't necessarily try to push religion down one's throat. They might come to your house over and over and over again after you keep telling them not to. <laughs> I didn't have that happen growing up. <laughs> you tell them, I'm not interested. I don't want your track. I don't want your, you know, whatever. And it might not be the same one that come back again, but it might be another one the next weekend. And it's always, always early Saturday morning when you're trying to sleep in. But anywho, again, no shade towards the, you know, Jehovah Witnesses. But again, I just want to know what y'all thought about this. This is, this is a really sad story, you know, regardless. You know, regardless, this is a really, really sad story. And one thing about it is his family, his family, who I'm assuming is, are probably Christians or, you know, religious, they forgave. They instantly forgave. They're, they're not having, holding no grudges. And I think the main reason why they probably forgave so easily is because of the simple fact that it, it's, it was illegal for people to go to that location. Um, they're, they're, This tribe is like an isolated tribe on an island. And he was over there trying to preach to them to try to get some of them to accept Christianity. I, again, I, I don't think he was trying to just go over there and, you know, you know, civilize them to anything like that. I think he was just going over there trying to tell them about God. But again, if he has no interpreter, I mean, I, I just think that he wasn't set up properly to even go over there, even though he shouldn't have been over there. He wasn't set up properly. He wasn't accommodated properly. Um, again, I don't even know if they have interpreters for the language that the people speak over there, because uh, like I said before, they didn't have people try to talk to them before. People who were also the African descent, who had supposedly came from that tribe, who couldn't even converse with them. So, but anywho, his his, uh, his family, you know, the, his mother, at least his mother, you know, she forgives them. She's like, my son, you know, he was a good person. Um, he went over there to, you know, try to save people. They're not, I, I don't think they would really even want charges pressed on. Just the way that they like forgave right off the bat. I don't think his mom or any of his family members are, you know, trying to seek charges. Even though the missionary group was talking about, you know, trying to place charges on them over there. Again... I don't even know how you could do that. How could you press charges? How could you bring somebody up for charges who speaks a language like no other? I mean, and how would you know which ones did it? 
So I think that's a lost cause right there. Them trying to bring up charges on the tribe. It, it it's sad to say, but it's it's John's fault. It, it's so sad to say because, like I said, this is a life that was lost. The whole situation is extremely sad. He was somebody's son, somebody's brother, somebody's friend. You know what I mean? But. It, I don't know. You know how people say sometimes, <laughs> almost in every city, um, there are particular areas where you shouldn't go. Especially if you're from out of town. Like, okay, I remember one time, I had went to the shy. And we used to go to the shy all the time because one of my exes I used to date, he has a lot of family, still has a lot of family in Chicago. And I remember one night, I wa this is what I used to smoke. I ain't smoked a cigarette in like 10 years. Matter of fact, Halloween, October 31st, was my 10-year anniversary of me being smoke-free. Um, and I was trying to go get a pack of cigarettes, Newports to be exact. <laughs> that was my cigarette of choice back then. And everybody else, I think it was a barbecue, and everybody else was already, you know, doing stuff, kicking it, partying, eating, you know, whatnot. And I wanted to go to the store. And everybody's like, no, wait, Tanya, wait, wait, wait. You know, his family tell me, wait, 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 Tanya. We'll, you know, we'll take you later. I don't need nobody to take me. I drove up here from Omaha in my vehicle. I can drive to the store. I know about pretty much where it is because at that time we had been there, you know, a couple of times to the city. And the area that we were in, and I couldn't tell you if it was west, north, I don't know. I know it wasn't that far from the Chicago Stadium, from where the Bulls played. So I know it wasn't that far. It was like a straight shot, darn near a straight shot all the way down to the stadium from where we was at. And it was like in a hood type of area. But anyway, they were like, no, 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 we, you can't go by yourself. And, the, you know, all panicking and stuff. I'm like, please. I mean, I, we might have a smaller city than, than the shy here in Omaha, but... Around that time, we had big, big time gangs, shootings all the time, murders. I mean, I'm like, boy, bye. I went to the store, got my cigarettes, got me something to drink, and headed back to the house, safe and sound. Like, I wasn't even worried about anything, you know? But anywho, you know, it's kind of like that, except for like a hundred times worse. People tell you not to go to this location. And you go anyway, and can't nobody fault them if they murdered you, even though it's a sad situation. Hey, Shawnette, <laughs> when you came earlier, you might have thought you were early. I was late. <laughs> I was late. I was supposed to start at four, but I was a little late. <laughs> but yeah, we're just discussing this guy, John Allen Chow, who was murdered over there, you know, by that African tribe near India. And just, you know, there's a lot of um, people making videos about it and commenting on the whole situation. Um, some of the comments people are making are so horrible. I'm trying to be light on the situation um, because I, I really, really believe that this young man should not have been allowed to go over there. Um, as well as the fisherman who took him there. Now, I said that he had bribed, <coughs> actually bribed a fisherman to go over there. And the fisherman that took him there, he knew good darn well that it was illegal because he lives, he's from that location. So he knew good darn well that it was illegal to bother this tribe, to go to the island, to try to reach out to them. And he took him anyway. So they are definitely trying to press charges on the fishermen that took him to that island. And it, it is, it, it's just so sad. It is just so sad. And the people, the Sentinelese people, you know, they have no contact with outsiders. They have lived like that for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. This tribe is over 30,000 years old. 
And the reason why it's illegal to make contact with that tribe, again, like I said, is because their immune system is not set up like ours. They have never been civilized. They have never been around civilization. They literally live in the stone age, caveman age, you know, pre-civilization, pre-organized religion. And this man went over there to teach them about Christ, about Jesus to these Africans who like live in the stone age, who has a language like no other. I don't, I just don't understand why the missionary, the missionary now is trying to press charges against, you know, the tribe. But like I said, how can they press charges against a tribe that is protected by the government over there? It's illegal to go over there. They speak a totally different language that nobody can communicate with. So who are you going to press charges on? And even if you were to be able to get over there and arrest somebody before they murdered you, because they try to kill every every person that tries to come in contact with him. They done killed children before. They done killed this white man and his kids. One of his kids was six years old. They just defending and protecting themselves. I mean, and you have to keep in mind, I was talking about this to my son, my teenager, you know, earlier. And, hey, primetime squad. <laughs> but, I mean, what do y'all think about this? Like, I'm just trying to imagine what be going through these African minds when people try to make contact with them. Mind you, the tribe is about 30,000 years old. So, you can almost assume that some of their ancestors were probably taken from Africa as slaves and shipped to wherever. Who knows? All over. And you can imagine the stories that's probably been told through the years about these white people who used to kidnap and kill their ancestors and enslave them. So you have no access to civilization and people come upon your island. They are white, by the way. And you can't communicate with them. So what do you think these Africans are going to assume? You know, they've been told these stories all through the years. You know, some of these, some of these Africans probably, you know how you look at your grandpa and grandma and be like, did that really happen? Come on now. Did y'all really walk 20 miles in the snow with no shoes on to go to school? You know, <laughs> some of them probably look at their grandparents like, for real, the people used to kidnap us and make us work on their land and they used to whip us and beat us and chain us up. Did that really happen? You know, but when they see the white man coming, they on defense. Like, um, you ain't about to kidnap me. You ain't about to kidnap me. Sure. They got they they got they swords, they got they um they got they rocks, they stones, they bow and arrow, and they gonna defend their community. So again, I just wanted to hear what y'all thought about this whole story because this is so crazy. This is so crazy. You said he shouldn't have went to that island. I heard about this from Olivia the Oracle. They probably think they are right. Right, because, you know, that's what Africans used to call the white men back then, devils. No shade to my white people, no shade. But that's what they used to call them back in the day. They used to call them devils. I mean, it's, it's wow. It's just crazy. I just don't understand... I need some of a drink. I just don't understand how the missionary could send him over there all by himself for one. All by himself. It just doesn't make sense to me. It makes absolutely no sense to me how they could send him over there by himself. <clears throat> Uh, 
but yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely agree that he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have went over there. I absolutely agree. And I absolutely also agree that the guy who took him there, that fisherman, he should definitely, definitely get in trouble. And then I also wonder, like how many times have maybe fishermen or other people might have took people to that island? Like, was it his intent? Was it like will intent, ill intentions from the fishermen? I mean, you have to think that. You have to think that. Like, this guy, this 26, 27-year-old, he's not from there. He's he's still young-minded. He might be grown, but he's still young-minded. And it, it, just the way he talked, it seemed like he was pretty naive. Just from some of the words in his journal. I don't know. So do y'all think his life was in vain? That's what I titled my live. Do y'all think his life was in vain? And by the way, the name of the missionary was called um, International Christian Concern. Um, they're trying to charge the islanders, um, some of the tribal members, with murder. It's a nonprofit organization. Um... It's just crazy how you just mentioned that, that, you know, some of the Africans back in the day used to call white people devils. Um, they have said that John, the guy whose life was lost, that he believed the devil was a part of that island and that he had to bring the word of Jesus there. He said God sent him. God told him to go over there. And when I was listening to, I can't remember what I was listening to, but somebody has said, God ain't tell that man to go over there. That man just went over there on his own. And I really think they do. Them Africans over there, I really think they do associate the white man with slavery and trying to steal their land. That's why I think they really be defending themselves the way they do. Not only that, they they can't communicate with you. They can't communicate with you in no possible way. So even if he was, like I said, able to speak to them without being murdered, I still think that he would not have been able to communicate with them. I mean... You can show them the Bible. They can't read it. They can't read it. You can talk about God, Jesus, till you blew in the face. They won't understand you. So I just don't understand. That, that is the biggest thing for me. Like, why do missionary people let him go over there? <sighs> Ain't no telling how much it costs for him to go over there. Then he had to hire a fisherman to get to the island. Then use a kayak to get... I mean, the fisherman got him close. The fisherman, he knew. <laughs> he better not get too close to that island. And then he got down, you know, in a kayak and went the rest of the way. Lost his boat because the Africans, they stole his boat. Well, not I won't say stole it. They took it from him when they were attacking him. He... they shot an arrow at him and hit him in his chest, but the Bible was there, you know, on his chest because he was holding his Bible against his chest. He swam back to the main boat and went back. He went back. I don't know. Let me read y'all some of his journal entries. This is just crazy. Oh, this is just crazy. Okay. Now they say Chow said he, he arrived in the island chain, you know, in that area where all those small islands was that I showed you um, in mid-October and wrote about his attempts to make contact with the Sentinelese after landing on the off-limits islands. And one of his entries dated November 16th, he has said he was writing while on the boat. 
um, in a cove of the southwest part of the island. And he wrote of making initial contact with the tribes and having to flee for his life. Um, what they could make out from his uh, notes or from his logs that he had made was that the islanders saw him, they blocked his exit. Um, that was the first time he ran into him, ran into the tribal members. They, one of them blocked him. They were not, they didn't have any weapon. And then he said another one had a weapon, had a knife. You know, most likely a handmade knife because these are still Stone Age people. He said he preached to them a little bit. Starting in Genesis. He was actually reading the Bible to them. And I'm assuming the Africans who speak totally different language had no idea what the heck he was talking about. No idea. So they don't know if the man was telling him, we're going to kill you, we're going to take you, we're going to take your island. He, They had no idea what he was talking about. He had, right, no no idea. And then, you know what I heard somebody say, Shawnette? I heard somebody say that, how do you know that they don't know Jesus? How do you know that they don't know God? How do we know who they worship? Something to think about. Something to think about. He truly did believe in what he uh, died and what he believed in. He was a he was definitely a martyr. He was definitely a martyr. You're right, crazy, but in a noble way. That's why I said I'm not gonna go in on this young man like I done saw and heard people do. Cause some people have been going in on this young man. And I'm like, for the respect of his life and for the respect of his family, I'm not going to go in on him for his actions, which I think, um, again, I think he shouldn't have went over there. But I'm going to try to be as nice as I can while we, you know, discussing this. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but that's that's something to think about. Like some people assume these in, in I can never say that word right. Ingenious, ingenious people. <laughs> um, people just assume just because they live in a stone age, just because they never been civilized, just because they might not have our type of organized religion. Who's to say they're not religious? Who's to say what they believe in, who they worship? You know, some people think, you know, everybody worships the same person, basically. They just name them something different. That's what some people believe. But you know what? I don't want to get into an argument about that because I'll have people coming from all over every different religion coming down on me like, what? <laughs> but that's what some people believe, that we all serve the same God. We just give them different names. I don't know. I'll let y'all let y'all think on that. But anywho, um, I just, you know, my sympathies to the family members of this young man. Um, I think this is a wake up call because, again, this is not the first person that has been murdered by this tribe. And I don't blame the tribe at all. I do not blame the tribe at all. I do not. I feel like if people wanted to make, if people wanted to try to uh, make contact with these tribes or any other, because this isn't the only uh, tribe out here like that. They said it's about 100, about maybe 100 to 120 uh, communities like this, you know, across the world that have never been civilized. So this isn't the only one. But if you didn't try to make contact with them years and years and years ago, I wouldn't recommend anybody do it now. Nobody. Because you just might want to write you a will out before you try to. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
I'm just saying. But anyway, I wanted to bring this to you guys' attention. I know some people have already heard about it and some people um, haven't heard about it yet or they were like kind of, you know, lost on the situation, you know, lost on what really happened or what really went on. But I just want to make some final points, which is I don't think it's right for the missionary to send that man over there by himself. Usually missionaries, don't they travel like in groups? I mean, you see them on TV. You see them on TV shows. You see them in movies. You see them on the news. They usually don't travel by themselves, especially over to remote countries or locations. So why on earth was this man over there by himself? And he was only 20. He's still a child. He's still a child. And I'm not, I I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say they were like, go ahead, go for it. Preach the word, my brother. Go forward. Go forth with the word of God. I'm not saying that they didn't try, talk, try to talk him out of it. I guess we don't know right now. I guess we don't know right now. My thing is, why was he by himself? By himself. I just, I, I, I can't get over that. And also now they're trying to uh, bring charges against that island, against those the tribe members, the tribal community. They're trying to press murder charges on him. I mean, on them. Again, how are you going to determine which one of those African tribe members murdered him? Because the fishermen, you know, they didn't see him be murdered, but they saw what looked like him. He was in the same clothes, you know, his by his attire and his height and everything. They knew it was the guy that they were burying, you know that they were burying on the island. The Africans, you know, after they murdered him, they started burying him. And now, <laughs> they're trying to get, recover the body. I don't know if that's if that's ever going to happen. I saw the news where, where they said they were getting closer and closer to determining where the body was. I doubt if they will actually get the body, though, for the, man, for the family. This just just leave those people alone. That's all I gotta say. Just leave those people alone. Yeah, I'm sure they serve some kind of some sort of God. Some sort of and I can imagine them people probably shoot. We over here, a lot of us dying in our fifties and sixties, not even making it to be grandparents. I can bet those people over there live some very long, happy lives. Some very long, happy lives. I mean, they aren't, they don't have to deal with any of the diseases. I don't know what diseases they deal with, but for them to be around for more than 30,000 years without a doctor who actually went to college, <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't have lawyers that went to college. They don't have policemen that went to police school. They don't have teachers that, I mean, over 30,000 years, these people have not been bothering anybody and they still are surviving. So I'm going to say, I'm sure they worship somebody. I will not say that is not God. I will not say that is not God because we don't know that. So as far as we know, he could have been over there trying to bring the word of Jesus to them and they could already know Jesus. They could already know Jesus. I mean... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a very fascinating story. I, that's why I keep... That's that's me, Shawnee. I'm like, why? Like, why? I, I couldn't fathom my child. My child. I have two sons, 21 and 17. And I cannot imagine my 26-year-old son. And I raised them in church, you know, we didn't go to church like as much as I did when I was a little girl because we lived in church when I was a little girl. But, you know, because of my jobs, I work some days that, you know, church is like on Sundays and stuff. So some days we can't go to church. But 
I couldn't fathom him traveling all the way over there to Africa, to India, to anywhere over there by himself. All by himself, and he's representing a missionary. I couldn't fathom that. Shoot, why they over there trying to bring charges on the uh, tribe? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking at them. Like, where the rest of y'all people at? Why didn't Why didn't somebody? <laughs> Oh, girl, again, why? That's the, <laughs> that's the big question. Why? <laughs> that's the big question. <laughs> why? Why, 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 why? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But his body is still on that island. His body is still on that island. Um, and, you know, human rights groups, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to urge police to leave it there because I think if they really try to retrieve that body, they will have to go armed. They will have to go armed. I mean, it, it there is no way they can retrieve that body and just go on that island and ask for that body. The man couldn't even preach the word to them. So I don't know who thinks they're going to go on that island and be like, uh, can we get that brother that y'all murdered last week? You know, y'all don't need him. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> Whew. whoa, this, this, mm. Mm. I guess, I guess. I think the I think the Christian group that sent the missionary to the island where he was killed, I think they need to just lose that idea of trying to press charges on them. I think he should just lose lose that idea. And I wonder how much he paid the local Indian fishermen to take him over there. I wonder, and that's that's what I was saying earlier, Shanette. Like, I wonder if the fishermen had ill intent because there's no telling how many people have probably died over there by trying to make contact. I mean, because this is crazy. When I was talking to my son, you know, his eyes was all like, "What do you mean they still wear wear you know straws and trees and and leaves, you know, for clothes?" And I mean, you see the people, the picture. Other people, like, they don't wear clothes. That None of them had on shoes. They, they, they probably don't have a comb. Who knows what they brush their teeth with? I mean, these are uncivilized people that we're talking about. And it's crazy to imagine that there are people on earth that still live like that. I mean... Sometimes I think, like, sometimes I used to think, like, I wonder what it would be like to live, you know, before pre-civilization. Like, what do you use for tissue? I know they say, like, they used to use leaves, you know, to wipe after they used the bathroom. I'm like, what do they use for, like, when women are having their, you know, their cycle? I mean, what do they use for, like, I mean, it's hard to imagine there are people who still live like that, but they have no worries, they ain't worried about us, so why should we be worried about them? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Girl, who you telling? You know how many tent revivals we had growing up? That's why I said, when I was a little girl, we lived in church. Like, honest to God, I wish there was somebody on this live who I grew up with and went to church with. When I say we lived in church, I remember one time we had a revival. It was the entire summer. The entire summer, the revival was supposed to go for like a few weeks, but you know, they, they just figured that, you know, it's going so well. And so people were coming and being blessed and saved and healed and all that, you know, jazz, they would add a few more weeks on it. Then it kept turning to a few more weeks to a few more weeks. I mean, we were in church all the time and all the kids be up there asleep, knock the heck out church services would be going to like one, two, three in the morning. I am not dragging it out either. I am not dragging it out. I mean, like, whew, we went to church a lot growing up, a lot. 
So, <laughs> but you know, if my son was a mission, I don't know. It, it's just crazy how a lot of these missionaries go overseas to these remote areas. There's a lot of people who I believe that could probably, you know, use some religion right here, right here in the U.S. of A., right here, and it's probably less dangerous, probably way less dangerous to try to teach them about the Word of God, but, you know, just my opinion, just my opinion, but y'all... I'm about to get off this live. I hope y'all um, are having a wonderful Wednesday. It's hump day. A few more days till Friday. I'm about to get my butt on some workout clothes because I need to go to the gym. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going to the gym and the person that I'm supposed to be going with has already called me like three times since I've been on this live. I don't know why she don't see me on this live. Like, um, she should have, she should have even got my notifications, but anywho, anywho, <laughs> the, the fisherman definitely knew how the people are now. He wanted to make that. That's what I was getting at before I started talking about how much we went to church. That's what I was getting at. I wonder if he had some ill intents. Um, uh, when I said, I don't know how many people probably had died over there, or, you know, we don't know how many for all we know. That fisherman could have been delivered a lot of people to that island to get some coins. For all we know, that's why I was like, I wonder how much that fisherman got paid. Hmm. I wonder. Mm, I bet you they do some research and look into his background. They'll probably find out that he done made a lot of coins from taking people to that island. That's that's so sad. If they did get access to that island to retrieve that man and actually were given access to that island, they might find other um, grave sites. And not for the locals. And not for the locals. But, anywho, again, my sympathies go out to the man, John Allen Chow, and to his family. This is a great, great lesson to be learned here. And I hope a lot of people in the missionaries and in other organizations really, really learn something from this. For one, that man should not have been out there by himself at all. At all. But anyway, you guys... <clears throat> have any more comments put them down in the comment section after i end the video i'll still get notifications of your comments um make sure you guys like the video share the video to your social media platforms like facebook twitter instagram um, also make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber um and also before i go let me put the link in here i know some of you have already joined our facebook group but I want to put the link in here so that you guys can, all you have to do is click on the link. It's a Facebook group. So all you got to do is click on the link. And once you click on the link, just click request to join. And I'll add you to the group. So that's the link right there. I'm going to get my butt out of here and try to work off a few calories. <laughs> work off a few calories. <laughs> but anyway, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday evening. Um, I'll be back at you guys probably a little later because I did want to do a review on a couple of shows that I watched. So um, it'll be a little later, though. It'll be like probably 9 9 30 somewhere around there but anyway i'll put the uh i'll schedule it so you guys can get the alert but anyway thank you guys for tuning in i appreciate you guys as always uh remember like share subscribe oh you spent half your childhood in church too and revival mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try to get my workout on, shoot, as much as I can 
as much as I can. <laughs> and you'll be blessed as well. Thank you so much. And in the meantime and in between time, Prime Time Squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out.